champion, my friend. We will fight it to the end. Because the preference with Bob. Thank you, Pacho Man. Welcome back to Breakfast with Bob, day one, Kona and Huggles on the Rocks. My name is Bob Babbitt. We're brought to you by Master Spas, as fuels go longer, Hoka Let's Fly, Deborah Wetsuit, Form Smart Swim Goggles, Zoot Sports, original triathlon brand, Quintana Roo, Premium Plus Sports, and of course, our Challenged Athletes Foundation. Our next guest, two-time 70.3 world champion, 2020 Olympian and silver medalist, and 2024 qualifier for the Olympics. Give it up for Taylor Nib. I see the cake. I see the cake. What? What are you talking about? <laughs> so when Taylor won the world championship at 70.3 Worlds, she'd been watching Breakfast with Bob where we give a, a cake at Four Seasons Wildlife for our Ironman world champion. And we gave her a goat. And we didn't have a cake for her. And she's like, where's my cake? Well, we have your cake now. Please give it up. Yes. Oh, wow. Thank you. <laughs> Jamie, you get the gas. I like that. See, Taylor, you can. Did you make this? Heidi made that all by herself. I like that. Here, you three get together. One, two. Can you tilt it up? Oh, yeah. Oh, Heidi can. Tilt a little more time, yes. One, two, three. Nice. I'll have it for you. Say oh, oh, wow. Thank you. <laughs> See, I gave you a cake. Come on now. <laughs> well, thank you. That's You're... better than I could have expected. <laughs> so how are you doing? I'm well. How are you? I am wonderful. So when we look back at our history, uh, I think Luke Van Lerde came over here in 1996. He had but it was invited. You didn't have to qualify back then. And he, he won Nice, so he was invited. Never run a marathon before, never did an Ironman before. And all he did was go five minutes under the course record and uh, run a 241 marathon and win his first of two Ironman World Championship titles. You're coming here with, I'm imagining you've never run a marathon before, correct? No, I have not. You've never done an Ironman before? No. Yeah. Well, that's a requisite, the marathon part, so. Yeah, sort of, yeah. <laughs> So how's it feel coming in here sort of like, okay, uh, I'm trying to do something that very few people have ever done. Well, I'm just grateful to be here. I think a lot of things when, I'm, when I've been to the island, it just kind of, it all makes sense now. Like I think that like this is my first time being here and seeing this. I think I've had breakfast with you five times over Zoom or in St. George. Right. And it's like, oh wow, this is the real deal. This is the real thing. So it's, I'm just grateful to be here. And what if you're, like you said, you vacationed here before, but training on the island, have you enjoyed it? Well, yes, it's definitely been an experience. There's still a lot to learn, I think. And I think there's some things that you can't be prepared for until race day. Yes. Uh, when you, you did the swim yesterday, yes. I know you were talking about possibly using a snorkel because that's a long way to swim. Well, yes, and we were both deviant and we didn't save our like bib numbers. So my bag was placed with yours underneath the table. So oh. <laughs> like, well, if Bob Babbitt does it, I don't feel as bad because I threw it away when I got my chip. But you're supposed to save them to mark your bag. So. I had no idea. I threw mine away as I well. I didn't either. But I thought, oh, if Bob did it, well, it's OK. It's not like they've told you a million times. So talk a little bit about what you were dealing with when you, uh, uh, when your, your foot injury that you were dealing with, because you let it, you tried to let it heal on its own, but it got to the point where you knew that, okay, I, I better find another option. Well, yes. Yeah, so my foot injury, I was diagnosed with it last June and it just kind of wasn't healing. I could feel when I was like going around corners that there was something just off. And then at 11 weeks, like I, it was a stress reaction, so it shouldn't have been too bad, but the bone isn't great for healing. And at 11 weeks, I saw a doctor and he's like, well, if it's not gonna heal, it's not gonna heal. Like, and he's like, worst case is you get surgery, but best case is it's already healed and you're just feeling some stuff. So I started running and I'm like, well, I don't feel anything because I got the clear from my doctor, I trust him. And <laughs> so that whole fall I raced without it. And it was actually after when I was on break, I started feeling it again. I think, cause when you're training, you might not feel everything. And so then it was kind of, okay, what are my options? And I could wait six weeks and not do anything or I could get surgery. So with the intention of trying to qualify for Paris this summer, I was like, well, I don't have six weeks to waste. I kind of need to just like go under the knife as soon as possible. And the surgeon I talked to, I said, okay, but can we do it tomorrow? And he's like, no. And I was like, why not? He's like, I already have surgeries booked, but I can do it like 
on oh. <laughs> right after New Year's because it was in this like window, Christmas and New Year's, and a lot of like people were away. But the surgeon was thankfully there, and he did a great job. It couldn't have gone better, and thankfully it's healed. Well, so, knock on wood. <laughs> but while you were dealing, while the the the, the while it was compromised, you, did you do like five races? Dallas, yes. Cagliari, you won 70.3 Worlds, race Bermuda and Abu Dhabi. Yes, and I had no idea that it was still not healed. I thought it was healed. So when I started feeling it again, it was like, oh, did I get another injury? But it showed non-union, so it just never healed. Um, and I didn't feel it. So you just never know what's going on in your body. That doesn't, <laughs> I'd like to say I have a good sense of what's going on in my body, but I guess I don't because I <laughs> did all those races <laughs> without it. But what saved me probably for Abu Dhabi was I actually broke my other toe in Bermuda. It was my proximal phalanx. And so I just like stubbed it on the blue carpet. And so I didn't run in between Bermuda and Abu Dhabi because I had another broken toe and I was told it's like no risk low risk so just like don't run and then you can run in the race and I was offered a nerve stint I'm like no I want to feel it in case something goes wrong but in that race the run to transition was so painful because I had a broken toe but <laughs> but, you, but you didn't notice the other thing no I didn't feel that for a while <laughs> wow how long was the rehab after the surgery well so I couldn't do anything for a month and then I could start swimming and biking again and I could only start running 12 weeks post-surgery, which was only six weeks pre-Yokohama. So that was <laughs> tight turnaround. Just a little bit. Uh, going to Paris and trying to you know, punch a ticket and make sure that you're you know, going to your second Olympic Games. Uh, talk a little bit about just the course itself and getting, being able to get fifth place and, and get that spot. Getting it a year ahead of time, it takes a lot of pressure off. It allows you to do stuff like this. Yes, so I don't know if everyone knows the qualification criteria for USA Triathlon. It was the first American in the top eight automatically qualified for Paris next summer. There are additional races, so Ponte Vedra occurred. No one qualified there, but there will be another one in the spring. So it's not a one-time thing, but um, I was grateful enough to race the race and punch my ticket. Um, but the course, I would say, it's spectacular for anyone who's wanting to watch the Olympics next summer. I think that they will do a fantastic job. They, so the course for the triathlon is 24% cobbled, 74% asphalt. And all the asphalt they laid new for the race. I don't know if they're gonna do that again next summer, but it was all fresh wow. asphalt. And it was apparently more expensive to close the Seine than the rest of the course. And we race on the Champs-Élysées, so that's not cheap, but to swim in the Seine is very expensive apparently. And I mean, what a month, you, you, get, the, uh, you get your spot there and then you go and win 70 point, your second 70.3 worlds. It, knowing where you came from that, I don't know if this thing's gonna heal, to then having, making the Olympic team and winning 70.3 worlds, that had, you had to be over the moon. Well, yes, and I think, I had to get a reminder email though the night before the race. One of my sponsors, he emailed me and he's like, just remember where you were in January and you weren't even able to walk, let alone yeah. like do anything like this and just be grateful because the nerves do get to you and the pressure gets to you and it's kind of like oh I just want to be home at this point I think I did not have one piece of clean laundry at that point of the race or so it was like I was smelling everything before I wore it because we had been in a hotel <laughs> we had been in a hotel for 16 days or like 14 days at that point and it's just I don't know how many people have been on the road for that long but when you're training a lot you just you go you through sweat stuff, stuff. You, you sweat stuff a lot. But I was like, ooh, this bra, it's like, it's the least bad smelling at this point before the race. <laughs> <laughs> now, is your mom racing here too? Yes, she is. How fun is it now? Have you guys been, how long have you been here? So we got here Friday, September, I think it was the 29th, 28th. Okay. 15 days out from the race. 15 days out from the race. And is mom ready? Well, I hope so. Now she claims this is going to be her last Ironman, but... You know, I've heard, I think it was her second Boston Marathon. She's like, that is my last Boston. And I think she's done seven Bostons. So you don't really, she doesn't understand why no one trusts her that when she says, this is my last. Um, and you just never know. You could take like a 10 year hiatus and come back to racing. You can do it forever. But mom, <laughs> was mom who got you into this? Yes, indirectly. She was racing. She got back into triathlon in 2006. She'd done a triathlon with her boyfriend in Chicago in the 90s. And then she had kids and she got back into it and then she, like her goal was to qualify for Kona and she was trying to in some 70.3s and her first full was like Placid in 2010. She qualified for Kona and so we got to come out. 
So when you look at the field that's racing here, you've, you've raced a lot of these folks, you've raced Lucy, you've raced most of the folks, but they've obviously got experience. But I remember when we first chatted, it was at Collins Cup in Samarin, and everybody was like, oh my God, she's riding a road bike. There's no way you can ride a road bike here. And all the other uh, women were like, I can't believe someone should get her a TT bike. And then you, oh, I don't know, had the fastest time of the day and, and blew everybody away. So you're, you're not somebody who's intimidated by much. It see, as Mark Allen would say, you're fearless. Well, some days. It depends on which version of me you're getting. But um, I, I think these are completely different races because the Collins Cup wasn't that big of a jump. But this is, I've been told that a uh, full Ironman is not two halves. It's a lot more. It's a lot so. more. Well, the, probably the main deal is all the nutrition, right? Just that when, where, how, figuring out what to, f what to take, when to take it. How have you trained for this in the midst of everything you were doing? I mean, was when you win 70.3 Worlds, you get this spot. You get to come here, yes. which is great. Craig Alexander, Marina Carfrey, all those guys, Leanna Cave, they all got that th that way. But did you decide, you didn't decide right away that you're going to come do this? No, but I was hopeful. I think pre-surgery, it was a like big goal to qualify for Paris in Paris so then I could do this because I think... With the Olympic cycle and knowing what I'd have to do to get back to racing in Paris, I just wanted a little bit of a reprieve and a step back right. before like going headfirst into the Olympic prep. And I didn't want to feel like burned out in any way, shape, or form. And so just like this is a very refreshing other perspective of something really incredible in the sport. Yesterday you did a 2.4-mile swim. Did it seem really long? Yes. <laughs> It was so long. <laughs> and like my goggles were hurting by the end because I like, tightened them a lot because you just in short course racing, you don't want to lose the goggles at all, like no water in. And it just like it seemed like a very, very long way. It, it is a very, very long way. <laughs> now, have you ridden 112 miles? I have. Wow. How'd that feel? Well, so the longest ride I've done is like 132, 133 miles. Wow. It was on my break last year, hence I came back with an injury. Well, it didn't heal, so I guess <laughs> just things not to do that you could do as a 24-year-old to mess up. But I did a ride from like, it was on Maui up the volcano and back from where we were staying. Yeah. And so it was like an eight hour plus day on the bike. And it was just, it was just fun. It was just fun. Yeah, what the hell? And then running, what's the furthest you've gone for that? 18.92 miles so far, so. 18.92, yeah, not 18.93, you know it's exactly 18.92. Well, no, I was told like, that's good, we'll save it for the race, so you check the box and move on. So is the goal, what, what is the goal? I mean, you're a person who, you're a racer, you go to race and go to the front and a lot of times win. Well, I think this is different because I think that you can't race it the same way. And normally I have like minimums that I wanna hit, and then if you go over, great. And if you're faster, great. But this is more, I guess, staying in control. And so I've been told it's a race of patience, which is not a strength of mine. But so like work on your weaknesses and embody it the whole day and embrace that. And so I, I have some like ideas of what I hope happens, but you never know what will happen. And the biggest thing for me is I just want to get to the finish line and continue to be walking and cognizant after that. <laughs> How about a round of applause for Taylor Nib? Iron Man hopeful. We love it. Poncho Man, come take us out. Because we are the champions, my friend. And we will fight to the end. Because it's breakfast with Bob. Poncho, Poncho Man, everybody. Man.